Flood alerts have been issued for 10 London boroughs as the capital braces itself for heavy rain over coming days. The Environment Agency said there was a possibility of flooding to low-lying lands, roads and riverside gardens. The Environment Agency has confirmed that a drought's been declared in Yorkshire for the first time in nearly four years. The number of officially declared drought hit English regions now stands at nine after large parts of the south, central areas and east where we're given the status on Friday. Now, environmental agency officials in Yorkshire say rain forecast this week won't be enough to counteract weeks of dry weather. But there are torrential downpours and thunderstorms hitting parts of the UK. The Met Office is warning of possible travel disruption, power cuts, hail and lightning strikes. There's also the risk of flash flooding. Um, Susan Powell is here with the weather. When it rains, it pours. It literally does fly, but never, it seems, where you want it to, does it? So you were looking there at the drought images from Yorkshire. The south coast has been pretty much inundated with showers, though, through this morning. This is Brighton a little earlier. Not much uptake on the beach here this morning. This has been one of the wettest parts of the UK in recent hours. Heavy thunderstorms rolling into that Sussex coast. 19 millimetres of rain in a few hours at Shoreham Airport. And now the heavier thundery showers are pushing their way further north but you'll notice it's not a solid line of rain there are gaps in those showers so not every bit of ground is getting a decent soaking some areas are staying stubbornly dry Hello, good afternoon. Rain at last across the capital. Now, it's been a while, but there were a few showers around last night, and that rain has become a bit more extensive this morning, as captured by weather watcher Nicholas here in Chelsea. Now, as we head through the rest of the day and indeed tomorrow, there is a Met Office weather warning in place for thunderstorms. The problem being that where we do see these thunderstorms crop up, then there could be some very heavy downpours, high rainfall totals, the ground is hard and dry, and the water won't necessarily soak through, so there could be some localised surface water flooding do watch out for that quite a change in the weather today wasn't it sally has gone somewhere that might be able to help us as we experience more extreme weather events hello sally where are you Hi, Duncan. I'm at the London Wetland Centre in Barnes. Look over here, Joe. Look, these are the little otters. Can you see them? There you go. There's a little ice cube puppet. Oh, they're so gorgeous. They love playing with ice cubes. I learned today that otters hold hands while they sleep so that they don't float off down river. Now, listen, the reason why we're here is because this place can be really good for adapting to climate change. Did you know that we have lost 90% of our wetlands in the UK? They're good for climate change because they can absorb water. We saw yesterday that on dry ground, it doesn't easily absorb water when we get uh, floods and rain. So they'd be good for flooding, preventing that. They're also good for stopping wildfires because, of course, water stops fire. And they're also great for biodiversity. Look over here, Joe. Look, there's some gorgeous little ducks. They were just nesting. The last little one is just disappearing off in the water. They are so sweet. The rest of them, I think, have gone for a little walk. Right, we've got a lovely guest with us now, Raksha, who works here. Raksha. Um, Tell me what happened during the drought that we had um, over the last few, de few, few weeks, quite frankly. What effect did, you have, did it have uh, on the wetlands here? Yeah, we've seen a real significant decrease in the water levels here, which has impacted animals such as the fish, for example. They've become more trapped. Um, have also noticed that some of the birds that need a specific level of water for their natural habitat um, have been struggling with their migrationary pattern as well. God, that's amazing. I can't bear to think of the fish being trapped as well. Mm. That's heartbreaking. Presumably your um, people here have been keeping good eye on them, making sure they're all all right. Yeah, definitely. The team here have been working really hard with refilling all of the water levels. Gosh, you've had to refill a wetland. That just sounds incredible, doesn't it? And, and talk to me a little bit about climate change. I'm guessing you would love to see more of these across London. They could be the perfect antidote to flooding, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think the wetlands are amazing. They're amazing, as you say, for tackling climate change, also for reducing um, flooding, also for reducing wild and increasing wildfires that we've been experiencing, um, and importantly for increasing people's health and well-being. Well, let's just briefly touch on that, actually, because you run this amazing thing here where you get GPs to prescribe people and community workers to come here and get help with their mental health. They do barefoot walks. I mean, what results are you seeing? Yeah, we've seen some excellent results. Um, people have said that they've had an increase in their confidence. Oh. They've also been able to engage and interact with nature to support their health and well-being. And people have also reported a reduction in their stress levels. 
Um, like you said, look at the birds. How can you feel stressed when you're looking at the birds? I know. It is a lovely, lovely place, and it's been a pleasure being here, and I hope you enjoyed seeing those beautiful otters, weren't we lucky? Look, let's take a little look at the forecast now. Hello again. Look at this little heart-shaped leaf, clearly enjoying the water, the rain that it's had. If you haven't seen any yet, there is still a thunderstorm warning in place for the rest of tonight and tomorrow. Could see a lot of rain falling in a short space of time and with the ground so dry that could well lead to some localised flash flooding. So watch out for that. In other weather news, still quite warm, not as hot as it has been and humid at the moment. But as we go through the rest of the week, probably from Thursday onwards, starting to feel a little bit less muggy. But in Scotland, some areas have been hit by a week's worth of rain in just 24 hours as the hot dry weather gives way to downpours. The Met Office is forecasting flash floods because the parched ground can't absorb the rain fast enough and heavy thunderstorms too across much of the UK in the coming days. Nearly 20 flood alerts have been issued in areas of the Midlands and in South East England. Time for the weather now. Droughts are affecting huge swathes of the country, but wetlands could help us be more prepared in the future, apparently, couldn't they, Becky? That's absolutely right. With our summers increasingly becoming hotter and drier, places like this, the London Wetland Centre, which is a 103-acre site in southwest London, well, they are increasingly crucial. Now, not only do these wetland areas really keep the local temperatures up to amazingly five degrees cooler, but they also help us to manage some of the effects of climate change, particularly the more recent volatility in the water cycle, like flooding, of course, that many people are dealing with or at risk from this week. So bearing in mind how crucial areas like this are, it might shock you to know that they're also very much at risk. So there's a number of factors of why wetlands are disappearing. Some of that is down to climate change. Um, some of that is agriculture. Some of that is urban building on sites. Some of it is pollution. So lots of different things. But wetlands are more effective than even rainforests in helping to keep our planet healthy. So they really are critical. And um, we have a campaign called Wetlands Can, which is campaigning to create 100,000 hectares of new wetlands in the UK. So there you go. As Winston Churchill would say, never let a good crisis go to waste. And they're certainly not. And many wetland and dryland areas will actually having the chance of a water table top up over the next few days because thunderstorms, as you know, are definitely a possibility. Let's so we are finally coming to the end of our most recent heat wave and it's been a bit of a doozy. We have had eight consecutive days where somewhere in the country has recorded at least 30 degrees. That is the longest duration for nearly 20 years. Temperatures peaked on Saturday at nearly 35 degrees. And now, of course, we have what's called the thundery breakdown. We do have weather warnings for thunderstorms in force for today and then through tomorrow as well. Let's have a look at the picture for this evening and overnight. At last, that's right, your eyes are not deceiving you. We have frontal systems lying across the UK and they are spreading bands of showers. And showers, of course, the big brother of showers, the noisy version, is a thunderstorm. They're just the really heavy showers continuing to spread south and south eastwards across the UK. So that's definitely worth bearing in mind. As I say, the warning's in force for that. Still got a hot and steamy sort of night towards the south. So rain on the way for many at very long last. As I said yesterday, some parts of the UK haven't measured any rain at all so far in August. And you know that smell that you get when the rain finally hits that dry, dusty sort of ground? Well, that has a name, and that name is called Petrichor. So next time you play Trivial Pursuit and win with that, you can thank me. Back to you in the studio. I'm just noting that down, Becky. Thanks very much for that. Hello. Thunderstorms will continue to rattle around across parts of England and Wales through the evening and overnight. And there'll still be some around on Wednesday, but uh, a shift has been sitting for the south, I think, uh, as the day goes on, perhaps really concentrating across the southeast of England and East Anglia late afternoon into the early evening on Wednesday with the risk of some flash flooding here then. It's this low to the south of the UK that's responsible for the thundery weather. Finger of high pressure further north across Scotland and Northern Ireland means actually a dry night ahead with clear skies and we lose the northerly wind that we've had through Tuesday. And uh, Elizabeth, um, rain for a lot of us today, but uh, not enough yet, I expect you're going to say. 
Uh, well, exactly. Not enough to sort the drought out at all. I certainly don't have any cute photos like that lovely little panda, but I do have some nice, interesting cloud formations here. So this is one from Acton earlier on. You can see all that clumpy cloud. It's a sign of great instability in the atmosphere. Look at these Mamatis clouds as captured by our weather watcher in Red Hill earlier on too. We may well see some more of these throughout the day tomorrow because, again, it's going to be another day when we see some more thunderstorms. And once more, it will be feeling cooler as well. Well. Now, the heavy thundery showers could cause some intense downpours. There is still that Met Office weather warning in place for thunderstorms, and that's valid not just tonight, but throughout the day tomorrow as well. And where we get the thunderstorms, those really high rainfall totals, just watch out because there could, of course, be some surface water flooding. The ground is hard and it's dry. It's just not going to absorb all of that water. Bye for now.